A man enjoys his cigarette he has rolled for himself, unaware that the tobacco he inhales is infected with the Sanford virus. This new and fatal virus is becoming more common while the demand for tobacco continues to rise within the population. It only takes one inhalation for the Sanford virus to move from your cigarette to your body. The virus can also be contracted through chewing tobacco, cigars, pipe tobacco, and secondhand smoke. There is no known cure or vaccination for the Sanford virus and little research has been made towards finding any. The first stage of the virus begins almost immediately. The victim feels slightly confused and misguided, sometimes wandering in directions with no destination. The smell of burning appears to be in the air, often followed by similar forms of mild sight and scent hallucinations. As the infection spreads in an effort to consume the host's brain, unpleasant gustatory sensations occur along with the internal softening of the mucous membranes. It is typical for hemorrhaging to occur while the victim wheezes and struggles to breathe. Tremendous pain shoots through all sections of the body as joints weaken rapidly. Ligaments tear apart and instability worsens, leaving it difficult for the victim to stand. As the virus-ridden body's crippling effects render movements involuntary, the entire skeletal structure becomes more brittle and vulnerable towards fractures. Body temperature rises dramatically, and the victim enters a state of feverish unconsciousness. Several moments after the blackout, the surviving victims are able to open their eyes. However, they are now completely blind. The pores dotting the victim's flesh have expanded to three times their regular size, allowing blood to pour freely from the majority of the body. As with hemophilia, the blood loses the ability to clot, and as seconds pass, the amount of blood loss becomes more excessive. Painful and uncontrollable muscle contractions will progress throughout the final stages of the virus. As the body undergoes terrible physical stress, the victim will often clench down on their teeth until they sometimes become completely unrooted from the bleeding gum line. It is not uncommon for the victim to regain some level of consciousness for the last few seconds of their life, but as they drag themselves to wherever they intend to go, they are spreading a hot and infectious fluid through seeping pustules. There is no known cure for the Sanford virus at this time, and in every recorded case of infection, the victim has always died within five hours after contraction. <laughs> <laughs>